Twitter. We're still talking about Twitter. But there are reasons for it, because there are a lot of people that aren't on Twitter. And it is going to be a staple of communications in the 21st century, so let's do that. And why? It's because Twitter isn't one thing. It's really, it's so simple. It's like trying to... So here you go. So I'm trying to make it easy for everybody. And, you know, words are words. I wouldn't take the words too seriously. But they're just ways to make this a little bit easier for people to understand. Especially if the people who really are don't have time to do this stuff. And a lot of this has been kind of inspired after leading um, communities for nurses and recently for doctors, that uh, there are a lot of tech-savvy doctors, a lot of tech-savvy nurses, but then there are those who just, you know, they're too busy for all of this crazy nonsense. Um, and yet it is important because they're becoming increasingly useful. If, assuming Facebook and Twitter become really big things, then if you're in medicine, if you're in nursing, if you're in life sciences or research, then you really need to understand how this stuff works. It's really not that big of a deal. But I can appreciate why Twitter stumbles people. Because they look at it, you know, if you're, if you're relatively sane, you kind of look at it and you go, I don't get this. So, so I've decided to kind of break things into four basic ways that you can look at Twitter. And they basically come down into sort of four, you could call them modes, or four different attitudes about how you approach Twitter and how you, how you can see Twitter and try to extract value from Twitter. And the four ones are focused, a focused approach, a filtered, focused, filtered, serendipitous, and random. Now, filter and focus could be sort of interchangeable in traditional, late, in very informal terms. Same thing with serendipitous and random. But there are differences, and with respect to Twitter, and especially for people who are new, I think they're important. Focus, filtered, serendipitous, random. So let's take them one by one. Focused. If you go into Twitter, you follow people. You might follow one person. You might follow two. You might follow a million. Um, but basically, focused is you select certain people, certain accounts that you follow, whether they're people or whether they're feeds, news feeds. You follow them. You're pretty strict about that. That's what you follow. You open up Twitter or you open up a client where you can view tweets and you're focused on those accounts and those people because you trust that they are going to curate the kind of content um, that you're looking for, or that the kind of people you want to have like quick little uh, social interactions with. So that's focused. Number two, number two is filtered. So Twitter offers a way to search. It offers a way. It has an API that can build an infinite a combination of applications on top of Twitter's basic structure, and search is one of those. And there are clients like TweetDeck for instance, and there are many others, that allow you to basically, you can focus, or you can filter. You can either take existing people, follow people that you're already following and put them into groups, say maybe different categories. Maybe you're following a doctor, so you're looking for uh, tweets about medicine. Maybe you're following a lawyer. Maybe you're following a web designer. Maybe you're following an entertainer. You can put them into different groups if you want. But there are other kinds of filter. You can take a search term and follow that, which is kind of focused, but you're filtering. Or you, you have, say, 100 people you're following, and half the time they're tweeting stuff that you think is garbage. Well, you can filter that stuff out. Maybe there's a certain word, a keyword, or a group of words that you're interested in. That's where filtered makes a lot of sense. Um, so filtered adds another layer of, of, of curation, specific curation. More focused, filtered curation. Number three, serendipity. Serendipity is extremely valuable in life in general. Right? Life is a series of serendipitous stuff. Um, and in life, you can have a focused approach to things. You can sort of filter it out. The serendipity is sort of what happens when you make choices about who or what you associate and who you're connected with, what you're connected with, what kinds of things you do. And you make a decision to basically put yourself in an environment associated with those people and those things. But you can't predict... You never know how that environment you put yourself into exactly works out. The people that, for instance, you may follow on Twitter may share a lot of the things that you do and may think similarly to you, but they will tweet things which you don't expect. 
which may be relevant to what you're doing. Or it may be kind of unexpected and it may be on the surface not something that directly relates. It's a connection that you, wouldn't, you would have otherwise not made. But being in a group that you've selected wherein a, uh, a, a, a piece of content or an idea or their communication with another person who sparks your interest... That's serendipitous. It's not something you planned. You weren't focused. You weren't filtering for it. You just, it came to you because of decisions about your focusing and filtering. Serendipity. It's a very important thing. It has tangible as well as intangible value. I'm a business person. You know, people can laugh at serendipity and say your business has to be focused and filled. You know, your business, you have to be focused and dedicated and everything has to be planned. No. No. Greatest things, you know, a, a new idea to how maybe you need to change your business model or a, a, a networking event that you see. You, you, you meet with people and serendipitously you meet somebody who becomes an, an invaluable business connection. It's just one example. Serendipity. And of course, then there's random. Random. On the surface, it seems valueless. But the fact is, is that in life... Most of the stuff that happens is random. Some of the biggest events that happen in your life are completely random. They really have nothing to do with decisions. They're not something you expected. You didn't ask for these random things. And yet sometimes they have value. Sometimes they're not good. Getting hit by a bus can be random. You know, a meteorite striking you and killing you, it's a random event, pretty much, from your perspective. But there are good things that can happen too. Random events sometimes have meaning, if you make meaning out of it. It's not serendipitous. It's not really exactly serendipitous, because it's not, the, it's not really the result of the environment that you chose to put you in, in the way that I explained, say, in Twitter. And so with respect to Twitter, random is exactly that. You just maybe occasionally open up the entire public stream and just ran, look at this stuff and see what happens randomly. There's value there. You can open up Twitter. 99% of the, pu the of this public stream is crazy nonsense. However, you know, and it's relative, but a lot of it is just goofy stuff that's like, oh my God. But in there might be the result of other people's focus and filtering and serendipity, which ends up in a random stream out of which you can extract some kind of value. It's not something you're going to spend your day on. You're not going to waste your time on, on random. But I would, I would say to you that you have four choices. You have four basic ways to look at Twitter. You can have a focused approach, a filtered approach, a serendipitous approach, and a random approach. You can use all four or some combination of those four. This has been Phil Bauman for Health is Social. I hope this helps you out, not just on Twitter, but in life in general. Think about that. It's kind of, I think it's kind of a cool way to look at things. Or maybe it's just complete nonsensical dobery. I don't know. You tell me in the comments here. I don't really care. I don't really respond too much to YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Phil Bauman, and I'm also on Health is Social. Health is social. Yes, it is. It's also serendipitous and random. And, and it's also random. So, cheers.